Hello. Does this work? Great. Hi, I am Noah Davidson, co-founder and CSO of Rejuvenate Bio. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, ARM for inviting us back again to uh, talk about our exciting work that we're doing. And uh, I'm excited to share the, uh, that we're using AAV gene therapy to target the core drivers of chronic age-related disease. And so all of us are aging and getting older, and it's extremely likely that we will encounter several different age-related diseases uh, throughout our lifetime. And this is a large burden on many people as well as the U.S. healthcare system. About 20% of GDP currently goes toward healthcare. Unfortunately, current treatments are very narrowly focused, usually focusing on a specific tissue, organ, pathway, and don't um, take into account the interconnected underlying nature of most age-related diseases. Someone with kidney failure is more likely to have heart failure. Someone with obesity is more likely to have other comorbidities. And treating each individu individual disease as a whack-a-mole approach is not, very, is not gonna get us to that next level of healthcare that we're all trying to achieve. And so underlying uh, all these different age-related diseases is a common factor that is causing most of these things, which is dysregulated gene expression profiles. And by using next-generation epigenetic uh, modification technology, by reprogramming the cells, we're able to reverse these different pathologies and create a healthier patient. And so what we've been able to show to date is that Rejuvenate can treat multiple different age-related diseases with a, with a single gene therapy. And we have several lead indications. Uh, our first two are in the cardiac space and the metabolic space. For cardiac space, we're going into uh, heart disease. And in metabolic space, we're going into different forms of obesity and type 2 diabetes. We've been able to raise greater than $30 million to date, uh, with a large portion of that coming from the DOD. And uh, we have a very strong IP portfolio. Most of it developed during my postdoc uh, at Harvard in George Church's lab. And we are 12 to 18 months from an IND filing, currently doing IND enabling studies. And uh, what's interesting about Rejuvenate Bio's platform is that we have numerous different indications which opens up exciting partnering ac uh, possibilities. And my story starts basically in my postdoc when I joined George's lab. I um, decided that the way to combat uh, the different diseases and health span issues that we have currently with everybody living longer is to take genes that we know make mice live longer and turn them into therapeutics that we can treat multiple different age-related diseases because of a shared underlying etiology of gene dysregulation. And we launched uh, Rejuvenate Bio in 2018 from the Church Lab. Uh, that's where most of the novel IP came from. And uh, we had some really amazing proof of concept data in rodents where we were able to treat heart failure, kidney failure, diabetes, obesity, as well as osteoarthritis. And since launching into Rejuvenate Bio, we've been able to translate that uh, success in rodents into large animal models and even naturally occurring disease in pets. And now we have uh, validated those proof of concept data in mice, in large animals, in people's pets, and we have safety data out to more than two and a half years of high levels of expression of these therapies without a single negative adverse side effect, which is really exciting. We've been able to put together an amazing syndicate of investors. Our leading, uh, lead investor for our last round, Kendall Capital Partners. Um, what's notable about them is that they have both George and Bob Langer on their advisory committee. And we've also uh, really enjoyed our relationship with and mentorship from Dig uh, Digitalis V Capital, KDT Ventures, and the support from the DOD. Uh, we've also been able to already partner out uh, our lead animal health program to Fibro Animal Health to commercialize that. Um, we're, for our first program there, we're treating the leading cause of heart failure in dogs, which is mitral valve disease. And to put a better perspective on what we're doing in the animal health space is we're trying to get as, to as many patients as possible, both in the animal health and human health space. And this is a nice proving ground for us because the number of patients per year is in the two to three million patients uh, coming with mitral valve disease every year. And so we're really taking it up a notch to get to many more patients. 
Um, we have a very robust pipeline with numerous different indications, as I mentioned. The first indication for RJB01 in the cardiac space is ARVC, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, and for the metabolic space is FPL, familial partial lipodystrophy. And we're both uh, we're completing IND enabling studies, as I mentioned, in the next 12 months, and uh, the commercial aspects of our animal health program are more accelerated than our human health, and we should be commercializing in a similar time frame. Um, our second therapeutic actually focuses on osteoarthritis and general joint dysfunction, because quality of life is uh, one of the more important aspects of uh, aging and all age-related diseases, and if you're able to have more mobility, you should have increased health and uh, just general happiness. And this is a huge problem in both the animal health and human health space. RJB03 touches more on what I mentioned in the first slide, which was epigenetic uh, reprogramming and remodeling. Um, RJB03 is focused on not just treating disease, but reversing it. It has the power to reverse gene expression profiles to an earlier time point so that it's like you never had the disease in the first place. So I think that's the power of these next generation therapies for RJB03 is that we'll target specific tissue types and specific diseases to build up our cadre of whole person rejuvenation and health. So we can increase the health of the entire patient, not just any one specific disease that is playing that whack-a-mole game. Here we're building up all of the whack-a-moles and getting them all at once. And so I keep hammering this one point home <coughs> that uh, dysregulation in gene expression is what is the underlying uh, concomitant factor for all age-related diseases. And if we're able to reverse those dysregulated gene networks, we're able to reverse a lot of the pathology of the disease. And our first therapeutic is targeting just two of those genes. And uh, through targeting just two of those genes, we have extremely robust uh, and uh, amazing efficacy data in both mice and dogs so far. And uh, the reason that it can work across numerous different diseases is not because it's magic, it's because it's taking, um, it's taking into account a common underlying pathology, which is inflammation and fibrosis. Uh, most diseases have some component of inflammation and fibrosis because there's damage being done to the tissue or organ or cell, and that creates an inflammatory environment, which creates fibrotic tissue, it creates non-functional tissue, and it creates this downward spiral where that's more non-functional tissue, more damage, more inflammation, and it keeps going. Rejuvenate Bios therapy stops that downward spiral and allows the body to heal naturally and not have negative remodeling events, stops that pleiotropic nature of those pathways that we need, but doesn't allow them to get out of hand. And so I think uh, Kathy High, who is uh, on our SAB, put it the best, so I'll just read a quote from her. The work Rejuvenate Bio is doing moves gene therapy to the next level. That is beyond single gene disorders to the realm of genetic strategies for complex and chronic diseases like aging. And by targeting these underlying common pathologies, it allows us to move into much larger patient populations, indications that affect many more people rather than just a single orphan disease in tens of thousands of patients. While that's important, we want to get to everybody. Um, and this is a slide more preaching to the choir for people involved with AAV. Um, AAV is very safe, uh, very effective at delivering genes to the liver. Well, the literature and, and has already provided uh, evidence for being able to infect the liver uh, with a single injection and get greater than 10 years of expression. Our first two therapeutics are secreted proteins, and so all we need to do is create a therapeutic biofactory in the body by taking advantage of the natural ability of AAV to infect the liver, thereby giving systemic effects to treat holistically the patient instead of just one-off targets for a specific tissue or a specific cell or for a specific pathway. Um, and so this allows us to move to uh, the entire patient. And uh, before I finish, uh, I want to highlight some of the other amazing people at Rejuvenate Bio. Um, my co-founders, uh, Dan and George. Uh, Dan and I have been uh, friends for uh, about 19 years now. Uh, we met at Caltech as undergrad, and then he went to get his MBA at Harvard and started several other companies. And then by the time the uh, technology was advanced enough in George's lab, uh, I was able to uh, convince Dan to join me on this journey. Uh, without George, uh, this would not be possible. He's been an amazing mentor and friend through this process. And uh, something to highlight here, though, is that um, 
George uh, actually has tripled down on this company, if you will. He is a founder, he's on our SAB, and he's also separately an investor. So he really believes in what Rejuvenate Bio is doing and is really excited to see us succeed. Some other notable people that we've been able to collaborate with, um, I already mentioned uh, Catherine High, uh, needs no introduction. She's a luminary in the field and been um, extremely helpful whenever I've had any kind of AAV questions and uh, just really supportive and uh, it's really great to see her so invested in what we're doing. She also has separately invested in Rejuvenate. Um, we've also been able to get two leading clinicians for the two different areas for our lead indications. Um, Dr. Hugh Calkins, we showed him our preclinical data in mouse models and he immediately signed up after that call onto our SAB. So we're really excited to have him and Dr. Elif Oral, she is a leading clinician in familial partial lipid dystrophy, and we're also excited to have her. Both of these people are going to allow us to move into the patient populations as quickly as possible to get our therapies out to the people who need them. Um, with that, thank you. Short and sweet.